All right, so what I'm working on here is I have a flint drill and we are using it to uh, drill out the end of an atlatl spear shaft to accept a four shaft. Now I have one that's already finished here. And here of course is the four shaft and this is tapered. And this actually fits pretty snugly right in there. Uh, aligns pretty straight for the most part. So this is what we're replicating. So I just kind of want to talk through the process a little bit of why I'm doing it the way I'm doing, the benefits of doing that, and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, experimental archaeology lesson as we go. So this flint drill, something snapped out of a piece of flint, and it's longer than I need it to be. And this is actually uh, replicated from one that's in the Overstreet book. So I can you know, open up the Overstreet with artifacts and lay this one right down next to one. It's very, very, very similar. And of course, my theory on that, which I don't think it's, I mean, it's not necessarily my theory, I just haven't heard anybody else really talk about it, but there's a correlation between when uh, socketed four shafts came on the scene, uh, I think we can determine that based on the drill points that we find. And I'm not an absolute expert in that. In fact, that's why uh, I have my own uh, in-house archaeologist, Morgan Smith, who uh, can help answer some questions that they find in the archaeological record. But from what I have gathered, uh, looking at certain dates of different artifacts, is the drill doesn't really show up on the scene until uh, either the tail end of Clovis or even after Clovis. In different regions, obviously, they don't adopt uh, techniques region-wide, you know, all at the same time. So one place may actually be using a drill, you know, say even a couple thousand years uh, earlier than a place thousands of miles away. So now, of course, this is modeled after an actual artifact. And originally, I thought that the four shaft would probably be as deep as the drill is, because if we drill one out kind of with modern methods, it's easy to have one that's that deep or even deeper, and we don't even think twice about it, because if you put it on an electric drill and just kind of run it in, the job is over in about 20 seconds. But there's a few things I've kind of learned along the way while doing this, and that is we don't actually need to use the whole distance of the drill. Um, Basically, I found it uh, right about four centimeters seems to be my go-to as of right now, which is about half of this drill. And why that's important is we're really parallel right here on the sides, and then we've got a taper. And as we use it, inevitably this tip chips, because that's what just stone does when it's torqued. It chips down a little, and then it kind of blunts, blunts off, and we can use it for a while. And then a new little chip will kind of happen. It helps us cut a little bit as we go. But it's so we have a lot more room to work with. And the reason it's going to be important to keep with the same drill is because if you make all your four shafts the same and your all your spear shafts are four shot four shaft socketed the same, then we can use all the same four shafts in the same spear shafts. Now, that way they're completely interchangeable. You never have to worry about anything. You just pick them up and you slide them in. But if we break this or run out of room, then now we're going to have a different shaped socket. Even that slight amount makes a big difference in how your four shaft seats. And so that is a reason that it's really important to actually use the same drill over and over and over, which kind of leads into the next question that I know a lot of people have, and it's why am I sitting here drilling this by hand? Because uh, we as humans love to overcomplicate things and try to over engineer and when I kind of posted a little bit on social media about this I had a lot of people you know that just naturally say well you know why can't you put this into you know embed this into a log and stand up and hand drill this down in or you know can somebody else hold it can you roll it can you do all these kind of different things all these ideas and it kind of even got me thinking a little bit and I started testing out a lot of different techniques and I think it is really important to remember that sometimes the simplest answer is the best one. And there's a reason that I actually prefer this method. And it is uh, several reasons, actually. The drill is very mobile at this point. I can go anywhere with this. So I can pick this up, hold it with a little piece of leather. I can do this around the campfire at night. I can do it uh, in the midday sun, sitting in the shade. 
uh, any anywhere that I want to work on this I can I don't have to get this done right now and what I found on average is to get my four centimeters I'm looking at about uh, about an average of an hour and 20 minutes of sitting here doing this to eat away enough to make uh, the full socket that I need to make. And it sounds like a great allocation of time, and it is, but it's well worth it. So one of the reasons why I am not interested, besides the fact that it's mobile, of affixing this into say like a, a big log or, or something and then sitting and turning the spear shaft on it is because you're talking about a very long spear shaft here you can't even see the whole thing but you know you're looking at six to seven feet long and it's it's fairly heavy for what it is and remember this is a piece of stone so if it's sticking up like this and we're we're doing it it doesn't take hardly any torquing and it's going to snap this point off and while many people wouldn't think that that's a huge problem i'll just go make a new one remember then that again changes how our four shafts interchange with one another but not only that you don't really want to have to remaking uh remake a drill bit it takes you know maybe half an hour to an hour on average depending on a piece of stone to make this drill bit plus it's a it's a resource so there's time invested there but if you run the risk of breaking it then not only is it that waste of resource, but then again, you have to go back and now you have to alter, build a new drill, go back and retouch all of these. So, I mean, this is the one I used for this one and it fits perfectly in here. And it's gonna be the same thing when this one's all said and done. And now either one of these four shafts, I can put in either one of these spears. But if you break this, again, you have to go back, make a whole new one, cause you know they're not gonna be exactly the same, even if they're, they're pretty well looked to be the same. So that's another reason for that. Now. I also experimented a little bit with the idea of holding this and actually rolling this shaft. And it actually does work some, but you'll surprisingly wear yourself out rolling it. And it's also, it doesn't really remove wood as fast as you would think it does, simply because you don't have the friction of pushing the two together where if i'm sitting here like this and twisting i'm pushing together as i do it but i can do it to the proper amount if i push hard enough and i hear a little click because i just knocked the flake off i can back off it a little bit but the speed in which i can turn this is very comparable if not even faster than simply rolling it now i'm not saying that i never roll it because i certainly do but it doesn't take long to kind of get almost bored or tired of doing this motion so and again i think it kind of takes your hole a little bit more out around but as it kind of comes back to it i end up kind of resorting back to just sitting here it's like it takes less calories and less energy to do this to sit here and just twist this as opposed to trying to hold and roll so that's kind of the reason that I, you'll see me just sit and hand drill like this. So again, it's sometimes we're looking to overcomplicate it and say, well, how can we make it faster? But sometimes faster isn't better. Sometimes it's worth to just take the time, exhibit some patience. And when it's all said and done, we're going to have a nice four chef socket uh, at the end of the day. Now, one thing that you will notice is if you sit down and actually eat some of these out, you'll start to really value these spears a lot more. And that starts to give a little bit more reasoning as to why we don't necessarily want to uh, have a smoother transition between, for, see this one's not done yet, it's wobbly a little bit. Um, we, we, we don't want a smooth transition to try to get this to penetrate over uh, or over penetrate onto the main shaft because on an animal because they could run off and actually break our main shaft which is a valuable resource that's why we have these so the idea of course is that it would penetrate in far enough and then stop and then the animal runs off and he keeps this and this lives to hunt another day so the resource in the shaft we want to preserve as much as possible because these big long spear shafts do take a certain amount of time to find and to straighten to dry and to tune and to get to fly really the way you want them to fly so when you have a good set you don't just want to waste it so you don't mind investing the time to do this right to really groove out this socket really well now i'm also going to tell you what i have found and compared to modern 
uh, equivalents is using a flint drill is actually better than a modern drill. A modern drill is faster, but again, we talk about fast verse done right, and the end result with a flint drill is actually better. And the reason is, is the inside of this four shaft socket, when done with a modern drill, is very squared off. And of course, what we find in the archeological record are these four shafts that have these tapered ends on them. And obviously they're not straight shafts that have gone into it because they were using a flint drill, that's what they had. But now if you try to replicate this and put a, a conical end down in a square, a squared off uh, four shaft socket, you're gonna have a lot of wiggle back and forth because it doesn't seat it properly. But when you use a flint drill, the flint is tapered. And so now it actually gathers it and holds it and actually sits it true. So again, this one's not done yet anyway, but this one hot here, when we put it in, it twists in, it's actually, it does not wobble at all. It will wobble the whole shaft. And another reason, it, listen to this real quick. You can hear the friction of why that grips so well. And the reason is, is because there's all these little grooves on the inside of this that the flint drill inherently makes all on its own. So you have all these little chips on the side of the flint drill. And as we turn it, it makes all these beautiful little grooves and they add a tremendous amount of friction to holding the four shaft in. Now, of course, we don't need the four shaft to stay in there long term. It, we're supposed to deliver the shot and it's actually supposed to release relatively easily, but you don't want to be walking along and the, the, the bouncing of your spear while you walk, rattle your four shaft out and you lose it. That's like a horrible worst case scenario. You go to use it now all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, you've lost your four shafts. So when you're using like a modern drill and you're drilling these out, it's a very smooth wall and there's no friction to hold it in and therefore you have to go deeper. And the deeper you go and the more squared off it is, it's almost, it's harder to get that tip to align really well. But if you take the time and use the flint drill, you only have to go about four centimeters and it really holds tight. So, I mean, you saw how, uh, how tight the finished product is and that's only a, like a four centimeter deep socket. So, at the end of the day, I think the lessons that we've really learned from this is that faster is not always better. It's, and uh, while we can use some modern implements if we want to and we can adjust the end product to do it, um, I'm a firm believer that taking your time and doing it right in the proper context is actually going to give you a better atlatl system at the end of the day. And if you go out and try this, there's inevitably going to be people that want to go out and find different methods of drilling these sockets. Some people may want to affix it into something or they want to have somebody hold it and the other person roll it. Um, at the end of the day, there's no right and wrong way. It's just however you get the job done. And so when this is all finally done and I'm done building all my spears, uh, what I will be doing is I'm going to take a cast of this, a resin cast. That's something that I start to do now. And then other people can kind of use this as a learning tool as well. Uh, and I, what I honestly wish I would have done was taken a cast before I used it. And then we can show the wear that it takes and the, and the tip chipping. Uh, but if, of course I didn't do that, we'll have to save that for another project. But what I'm going to do is make a cast out of this so I can keep it. But then I'm also going to donate this to Texas A&M University so they can do an edgeware analysis uh, on the micro chipping that occurs here more so on this end of the blade than up here and see if that aligns with artifacts that they find uh, in the archaeological record as far as drill bits are concerned to see is there more wear that takes place to a certain depth uh, of foreshaft or even other things that they're drilling because that'll also give us a little bit of insight as to how deep they were actually drilling these four shafts. Um, mine is not based off anything other than my own experience and what I feel is deep enough. So it's unnecessary for me to go the full length of the drill if half the drill actually works extremely well. So, but that's always interesting to say, uh, you know, what I do and then compare that to what they find archeologically. And, and sometimes we can get these little nuggets of information 
that I can come back and re-implement and say, well, what would I gain by doing it differently? And I don't even know what that could be. It may be that they used even less of the drill than I am. Could be about the same or they could be using the whole thing. I've got really no idea, but that's what makes these studies so interesting. So if you like these studies that I do, remember that I do have a Patreon account, but none of it actually goes into my pocket. I use all of the Patreon money to go back into contributions for science. If you like the stuff that I do, if you gained uh, something out of this video, uh, you know, you learned a little something from me, don't be afraid to go and pledge. If it's like three bucks a month or five bucks a month or whatever you feel comfortable doing, you'll go a long way in helping uh, this mission of experimental archaeology uh, through practical application. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next build and or adventure.